Greetings viewers, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're back talking about air conditioning systems. This time, the video will be specifically on air conditioning systems in Subarus and common issues with Subaru air conditioning systems. So we have talked about these issues in other videos in the past, uh, each individual issue in its own video. Uh, most of those videos are a year or two years old. And in that time, we have doubled and almost tripled the channel. So some of you, this will be a refresher. Some of you, this will be new information, uh, being that it's July and it is hot as blue blazes out here, especially where I'm at in South Carolina. I believe it's about 93 degrees. I've waited all day to film. It's 7.30, the sun's going down and I'm still just pouring sweat. So sorry if I look gross. It's uh, unavoidable right now. So with that said, let's go ahead and get into the video talking about common AC issues you might experience on your Subaru. So at the top of our list, the most common failure I see with Subaru air condition systems is leaking O-rings at the AC compressor. This line and this line both have an O-ring that seal them to keep your refrigerant from leaving the system and it is extremely common. Uh, this issue basically covers all 90 through mid-2010 Subarus. I don't think the new ones uh, have been around long enough for this issue to start cropping up on them, but I'm sure uh, if you know it follows suit, they will have this issue in the future as well. Uh, but I don't know why it is, but mainly it's just the two O-rings right here at the compressor. Uh, with age, they dry out, shrink, what have you, and then they fail, causing your refrigerant to leak out. Once the refrigerant leaks out, of course, your air conditioning system no longer functions. Uh, this on my 2002 Outback LL Bean with a three liter, the compressor is a little bit different uh, than what most of you have on your 2.5 liters. Um, but it's the same issue whether it's a three liter or 2.5 or two liter or 2.2. All of the Subarus I've worked on have this issue. Put a small charge in it enough to get the compressor to cycle on, put UV dye in the system, let it run, and look for UV dye at this connection, at this connection. My 2002 Outback here, uh, when I got it, that was the failure with the air conditioning system. These two O-rings were leaking, replaced them, charged the system. I haven't touched it in seven years now. I think I might have done a pull down and recharge at some point, but other than that, no issues out of the AC system on the car. My 2004 uh, Aspen White WRX, that was the issue why the AC didn't work on it, those O-rings. Uh, my 95 Legacy L patches, as many of you seen on the channel. Uh, AC system was perfect in it for about five years. It set for about four, and when I did the videos last year on getting it back up and going, replacing the clutch, etc., had AC issues come the summertime. Again, these two O-rings. Uh, I've seen this issue time and time again, very common. If your air condition stops working, that's where I advise most people to start at, is looking at those O-rings. That said, you also always wanna check your AC Schrader valve cores. We talked about that in the first AC video, uh, or the second, or probably both of them. Uh, it's not a real common source of leakage I find on Subarus. 99% of the time it's these O-rings. Uh, but those Schrader valves can fail. It's cheap insurance to go ahead and replace them and while you're replacing the O-rings. So, like I said, number one failure I see on these AC systems. Uh, number two is right here on front of the AC compressor, and it is the AC compressor clutch air gap. Um, as these compressor clutches wear, many times cycling on and off, uh, they wear down some and it creates a larger gap here. Uh, let's move the camera in closer so you can get a better look. Pretty much box standard AC compressor with an electromagnetic clutch that engages and disengages the compressor. Uh, there are many different types of AC compressors. Some run constantly, some do not disengage. Uh, but this is what you see on the vast majority of vehicles. It is those that are equipped with electromagnetic, electromagnetic clutches. So basically all that entails is you have power going to the electromagnetic clutch here. It powers an electromagnet in the name. And when that electromagnet is energized, it, through the force of magnetism, 
pulls this front clutch in to engage your AC compressor and move refrigerant. Uh, when AC is not needed or when temperature drops too low or if you need to accelerate full throttle, uh, this will disengage, freeing up some engine power uh, that you lose when the compressor is under load and putting a load on the engine. So for this to operate correctly, you have a particular air gap, as I said before, and that's that little slot, that little slice you see right there. If this gap gets too big, the electromagnet will not have enough uh, magnetic force to pull the clutch in and will not engage your compressor. If it's too tight, uh, the clutch, the compressor will not disengage and you can burn out your clutch, uh, hurt the air conditioned compressor and have a bad day. So I've seen this issue as well on quite a few cars. It's not exactly common to one compressor or another. I've seen it quite a bit on the 8.6 compressor. It's been an issue on some Forester and Imprezas, and I believe I've seen it on a handful of 2.5 Outbacks. Again, it's something that just usually comes with age and wear. But like I said, this needs to be a particular thickness. What thickness is it supposed to be? Well, we can look in the factory service manual, and the factory service manual states that this gap should be 0.45 millimeters plus or minus 0.15. And the way we normally test that is with a set of feeler gauges. You want the feeler gauge to just go in to the slot with a little bit of drag on it. That's how you know you've got the right gap. Now there is another faster, easier way to check this and check all the electronics as well. And that is by using the diagnostic test mode connector or check plug connector. There's many different names for it, but it is under the dash near the steering column. We're gonna go in there in a second and demonstrate that. Uh, basically, it's two green electrical connectors that are normally disconnected, but very close to each other under the dashboard. Uh, they are used at certain times to diagnose certain issues with Subarus. Sometimes uh, you need them connected when you hook up a factory scan tool. But when you connect these two connectors, turn your ignition key to the on position, it will start to cycle relays and things ran off of relays. So one thing that will happen is your fans will turn on and off, your AC compressor clutch will cycle on and off, EVAP, and other solenoids will cycle on and off, uh, depending on make, model, engine, etc. different things will happen. Uh, but that is one quick and easy way to test that the air gap is not too great and that your clutch will engage and your electronics are good. So let's go ahead and go into the dash, connect the test mode connector, and come back and check this out. All right, guys, hopefully you can see this well enough. I had to switch to the GoPro. It is really cramped under here under the dash. But uh, there are your green test mode connectors. As I said, uh, most of them from the mid 90s up are green. I believe that some of the early 90 uh, model years were either clear or black. It's been a while since I've worked on some of the old models, but basically all you wanna do is take these two and plug them into each other. fiddly to do blind with one hand. All right, we got them hooked together. Uh, now we'll turn the ignition switch on and go back under the hood. All right, guys, hopefully you'll be able to hear me over the cooling fan cycling on and off, but you can hear our AC compressor clutch clicking on and off. It is disengaged, engaged, disengaged, engaged. So with that quick and easy test, we now know that our AC clutch air gap is correct. The electromagnet can engage uh, the clutch and no issues in our electronics via our AC relay wiring, etc. But uh, yeah, that's another point I have seen where people have, you know, had their AC serviced, everything's topped up, swapped their AC relays around, done all kinds of things scratching their head, and the issue was that the air gap was just too great for the electromagnet to pull the clutch in and engage the compressor. It does happen. 
And like I said, I've seen it multiple times. So another thing you might want to check on your Subaru. So this will be really quick. Uh, this isn't really a common issue. Uh, it was an issue on six cylinder Subarus, uh, specifically the BH and BE chassis with the three liter. Uh, this particular AC compressor for the six cylinder, the failure was back here. It was the revolution sensor. And I did film a video many, many years ago on replacing one of these, but half the footage got lost and I never made it a video. Uh, but Subaru does sell this sensor separately. I think it's about 50 bucks for the kit. Uh, most dealerships will tell you it doesn't exist and try to sell you another four or $500 compressor, but don't be fooled, you can get this sensor by itself. Uh, what the Revolution sensor does is it, pretty much what it says, it senses the revolutions, the RPMs of the AC compressor. Uh, so the climate control computer will know when the compressor is turning and when it's not, and it matches that against the engine RPM as a reference point. Uh, the reason it does this is because the three liter ran one serpentine belt. Uh, all the older Subarus from the 80s all the way up until uh, just recently, I say recently, but it's been about 10 years now, on the two liter 2.2, 2.5, they had a standalone belt for the AC compressor. So if your AC compressor uh, seized up, the clutch screwed up or whatever, you know, you'd throw your AC belt, burn your AC belt up, but you could still drive home because your other belt was turning your power steering pump and your alternator. Uh, not so the case on the three liter because it used one serpentine belt to turn all the accessories. If you had an issue with the AC compressor seizing up, you'd throw your whole belt off and then you'd be in big trouble. So that's what this sensor was for. It was for the HVAC computer to monitor the compressor and make sure it was engaging and disengaging and spinning when it was supposed to spin. Uh, but if this goes bad, which I've seen a couple go bad, it's pretty rare, uh, the compressor will not engage. The computer will go to engage it, see that uh, not picking up RPM from it and disengage it thinking that it seized up. So like I said, not a common issue, but another issue that I have seen something to look out for on your three liter. So another source of issues for your air conditioned system can be caused by a clogged cabin air filter. Uh, I know you're thinking, well, what in the world does that have to do with my air conditioning uh, working effectively? Well, I've seen on multiple occasions, uh, people coming in that have neglected to service their cabin air filter and it has nearly completely been stopped up. The issue there is that you get low vent pressure. And when I say low vent pressure, what I mean is the volume of air blowing from your actual air conditioning vents inside the car will be diminished because of a clogged cabin air filter. Uh, case in point, my 2002 Bug Eye WRX, I got it and I had an issue where I'd gone through the AC system, made sure I was fully charged, the compressor was engaging and disengaging as it should. My cooling fans were working, but the cabin just wasn't getting cool. I could turn the fan speed all the way to max and I was barely getting any air out of the vents. So decided to pull out the cabin air filter and take a look and sure enough, it was completely clogged up. So you always wanna check that cabin air filter, make sure it's not clogged up and stifling the amount of air that's gonna blow into the cabin. So another area of concern, uh, this is not a failure, so to say, as is a maintenance issue and design change. As we saw on the AC compressor on this car, the AC compressor and clutch are pretty large, pretty robust. Uh, Subaru had a larger AC compressor all the way up until about 2004. Uh, 2005 model, they downsized the AC compressor. They also downsized the AC compressor clutch and they reduced the size of the AC system. Uh, these old systems usually had a charge of about one and a half pounds. The newer 05 plus systems only hold about a pound. So if you have a slight leak in the newer systems, uh, you notice a greater reduction in the efficiency of the air conditioning system as compared to the older systems that had the larger compressor, larger refrigerant volume. Uh, I will put a picture up on the screen. I could go over to my 05 Legacy GT and show you, but uh, I don't know where the keys to it are right now, so we're not going to go digging for that. 
uh, but I'll try to put a comparison up on the screen for you to see uh, the size difference between the uh, pre-2005 compressors and the post-2005 compressors is, is a pretty substantial difference and the newer systems just didn't seem to cool quite as well as the older systems. Um, about the 20 teens or so, some of the compressors got uh, increased in size and some of the refrigerant capacities got upped a little bit and the AC systems performed a lot better. I'm only using my experience as a point of reference uh, being in the southeast and I'm sure people in the southwest uh, have had the issue as well. But it seemed 2005 to 2009 particularly had the weakest AC system. Uh, these old ones were good to freeze you out if you turned it on full blast and just held it. So again, that's not technically a failure point. It's just something that you need to be aware of if you have that your model of Subaru that you do have a smaller compressor and a smaller refrigerant capacity. So it becomes more important for you to do an annual uh, tune up on your AC system uh, than for someone with the older car with the older system that is a, a little bit more robust in my opinion. Another point of failure I've been seeing in modern Subarus talking about teens and newer is the AC compressor itself. Uh, I'll put in a clip if I still have it of my 2013 Crosstrack, the noise coming from the AC compressor. I have found in my research and uh, from viewers and talking to other techs that these compressors seem to fail in higher rates than the older models did. Uh, as noted in the video, uh, they do make more noise or they will start making this noise at a uh, point of failure. I don't know if they mechanically uh, fail internally because mine's making the noise off and on and the system cools perfectly fine. Uh, but I assume that eventually they stop cooling. I've had, like I said, plenty of you viewers comment that your uh, Crosstrek Forester, et cetera, you know, 2012, 2014, 2016, that age uh, was having a noisy compressor, had the same issues my Crosstrack did and have had AC compressors replaced under warranty and have had issues. So, so I'm not sure what brand exactly the new compressors are. I'll put it down here. I don't have my Crosstrack with me and haven't looked at it recently. I know the old Subaru compressors, I know they were mostly uh, Zexel and Denso. So it seems that the newer compressors are having uh, a slightly higher failure rate than the old ones were. So something else to look out for. So that basically does it for the video. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed and I will see you in the next one.